Good evening, everyone. It being 7 p.m. on Tuesday, May 31st, 2022, we will begin our annual town meeting this evening. Please stand for a Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, on the heels of Memorial Day, may we honor all those who serve in our military at home and abroad and for their families. And as we move into National Gun Violence Awareness Month, may we remember the far too many victims of gun violence across the country and their families. Thank you. Clerk Camino, can we begin with a roll call, please? Councilor Berica? Here. Councilor Flaherty? Here. Councilor Hume? Here. Councilor Mackin? Here. Councilor Maglio? Here. Councilor O'Brien is not attending this evening. Councilor Reynolds? Here. Councilor Ringus? Here. Councilor Ryan? Here. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be moving on to our announcements. I'd like to thank Mayor Kokoros and retired Marine Heidi Hurley for hosting a very moving, um, on a perfect day, Memorial Day celebration on Sunday. Uh, for those who were unable to attend, you can watch the ceremony on BCAM, um, BCAM's YouTube channel. Highly recommended. And thank you again, uh, Mayor Kokoros, for hosting that event. This coming Saturday is the BHS graduation, June 4th at 10 a.m., so congratulations to all of our high school seniors who made it to this important milestone, and we are looking forward to celebrating with you on Saturday morning. Um, and do any other counselors have announcements this evening? Councilor Maglia? Thank you, Councilor Borke. I would just like to remind people that on Sunday, June 5th, the mayor has, um, is hosting a flag raising for gay pride to um, recognize and celebrate visibility and representation for all of the LGBTQ plus members of our community. So come on over to Town Hall at 1 o'clock on Sunday, June 5th, right out in front. Thank you very much. Any other counselors have announcements? All right, seeing none. Yes, go right ahead, Councilor Reynolds. Uh, I just want to uh, just congratulate the planning department and Mayor Kokoris' office for a great uh, master plan steering committee open house held here uh, on the 21st of May. It was a really great turnout, um, and it was very encouraging to see the number of Braintree residents uh, who expressed their opinions and their concerns. Uh, it was a very well-organized uh, event and very well attended, and it's very encouraging. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reynolds. All right, moving on to approval of minutes. We have no minutes to approve this evening. Um, and before we jump into our first item of business, I want to make sure I recognize and thank Mayor Kokoros and his Chief of Staff for being here with us, all of the department heads who are in attendance, as well as our town auditors, Sean McGoldrick and Catherine Pomeroy. I know we have members of our school committee here this evening, Chairwoman Heger, members Tuffy, Koblamir, and Lynch. Um, and if I missed anyone, I apologize, but thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, and as set forth in our town charter, tonight is the annual town meeting to hold a public hearing on the town budget. Uh, we have three separate public hearings tonight on three separate budget motions. They're all going to follow the same format. So we will take a vote to open the public hearing. Then we will hear from the mayor's office, our town auditor, the councilors, and any members of the public wishing to speak. Then we will vote to close the public hearing. And then finally, we will vote on the motions before us. Um, and I also want to take a moment to thank the Ways and Means Committee, Chairman Reynolds, Vice Chair Flaherty, and Member Maglio, the work they've done over the last month. It's been thorough, it's been thoughtful, 
it's truly in the best interest of the residents. Um, so thank you for serving both the council and our community through all of the work you did over the last month. It is, it is a heavy lift and a ton of work. And um, on behalf of, of the residents, thank you. Um, and in that vein, I also want to take a moment to thank all of our employees who work for the town, serving the residents every single day, many 24-7, police, fire, DPW crews. I think I saw Chris Griffin here for, from Parks. I'm pretty sure you work seven days a week, Chris. Um, so, you know, when it, when it comes to running the town, we spend most of our money on our people, and you are worth it. So thank you for all you do for all of us um, as residents of this community. And with that, I would like to move on to old business 22025 Mayor FY 2023 operating budget or take up any action relative thereto. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. Thank you, Councilors Ryan and Hume. All I those actually in, forget how to do the vote. All those in favor. All the, thank you. We have, have usually do a roll call vote. All those in favor. <laughs> Any opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you for indulging me. Um, and with that, I'm going to refer to our chairman of the Committee of Ways and Means, Councillor Reynolds, for your recommendation. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd first just like to address uh, the effort. So this review of the submitted fiscal year 2023 proposed operating budget before the full council for a vote here this evening has been an arduous process for the council's committee on ways and means. The town of Braintree continues to face a very difficult economic path forward and as a result the responsibilities of the council's financial oversight were a challenging task. As the chair of the ways and means committee I would like to express my sincerest thanks to my fellow committee members, Councillor Julia Flaherty, and Councillor Elizabeth Maglio <clears throat> for the tremendous time and the effort that they put into studying and understanding the mayor's proposed fiscal 2023 operating budget. With the after effects of COVID-19, Branchy has been challenged like many of the other Massachusetts communities to maintain the correct funding priorities that have made our community so special. But these challenges are not over, nor do they look like will be in a stronger funding position come this time next year. For a number of years now, Braintree has not been able to generate the amount of funding required to keep up with the escalating operating and personnel costs in a manner that has allowed us to adequately fund all of our spending priorities. This is the greatest challenge of our town's leadership. With a firm understanding that how we spend what limited funds we have, we on the Ways and Means Committee attempted to question and seek assurances that we are proceeding forward with a commitment to our most important spending priorities. Every dollar in this budget is sorely needed, and I can say confidently that there was no room to make any cuts to the Mayor's proposed spending. However, it is my firm belief that we are, as a town, have not placed a high enough priority on our school funding. For the second year in a row, in my personal opinion, we have underfunded the most important piece of our annual budget. This year's school budget decisions, as stated by the school superintendent, James Lee, at an earlier hearing, clearly point out that by only increasing spending by 0.9% over last year's totals, the town has decided, by effect, to create a $6 million deficit to start the fiscal 24 budget planning. This is a solid number based on the use of one-time funding to fill gaps on the school budget of fiscal 2022 and now in fiscal 2023. This is a problem that can be avoided by adding more money in this year's budget in order to lessen the significant lift it will take to not cut the school budget further in fiscal 2024. Our children's future and the potential to receive the level of education and care is going to be jeopardized. We need to ensure that we are investing responsibly in their future. The town stabilization funds are near zero. Currently, our free cash balance is dangerously low, which after tonight's vote for supplemental number one will leave us with $3.713 million in free cash balance. That represents only a 
a 2.4% of our operating budget. Times are tough, and it is what it is. I'm not painting a bleak picture for effect. I'm pointing out the reality of our times. With this economic reality staring us in the face, I am doubly committed to doing my part as a member of this council to contribute whatever value this council can bring to bear on those enormous challenges we, the residents of Branchy, have before us. And so, Madam President, I'd like to report to the council that the Committee on Ways and Means, understanding what the situations are, and by the charter of our account, of our uh, responsibilities as a council and oversight for finances, that we have voted unanimously in favor of recommending approval. Thank you very much, Chairman Reynolds. Um, I'd like now to invite the mayor or anyone from his staff to speak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam President, Town Council. And I want to thank the Ways and Means for their hard work and due diligence and reviewing the budget. And I appreciate their vote of confidence uh, that we have put together um, the best budget we can within uh, the confines of our finances. I'd also like to thank the school committee, um, members Lisa Heger, uh, our chairperson, Kelly Cobblemere, Matt Lynch, Kathy Tuffy, who are here tonight. also want to um, recognize uh, my department heads. You know, they're the ones that uh, really do so much work throughout the year to make sure that um, our town is operating um, the best that it can. And with us tonight, we have DPW Director James Arsenault, Director of Elder Affairs, Shamila Fiswa, Police Chief Mark Du Bois, our Superintendent of Schools, Jim Lee, Director of Municipal Licenses and Inspection and COVID, uh, Mary Beth McGrath, uh, Fire Chief Jim O'Brien, Director of Planning and Community Development, Mel Melissa santucci Razi. Contract Administrator Grant Writer, Lorraine C. Director of Human Resources, Karen Shanley, as well as Kathy Holquist. Director of Finance, the man, Ed Spellman, um, as well as their Public Library Director, Terry Stano, and my Chief of Staff and Director of Operations, Nicole Taub. Also, I want to uh, note even though he's not in my department, Jim Casey, who's always been an ally and worked so hard um, throughout uh, the budgetary process and helped us out. And I want to, you know, thank my uh, staff members, uh, Steve Larry, um, Kate Naughton, for what they do every day, take care of our residents. Um, I just say that, you know, the, the budget has obviously been challenging because of COVID, and we have stepped up to that challenge, utilize any resources that we have uh, to take care of that. I just want to recognize, take a moment, and recognize a few folks um, that are leaving us, retiring. Uh, one who's, who's left, Ed Cronin, who spent many years um, as our business manager at the, at the school department, uh, did a wonderful job, and he's going to be sorely missed. Uh, also, Kathy Holmquist, who's retiring. Uh, our benefits coordinator. And last but not least, um, our HR director, Karen Shanley. Karen Shanley uh, has done an amazing job in uh, the time that she's been here at Braintree. And, you know, back in the days when I was a counselor, I worked with her on different uh, issues, and she's always been there uh, to help uh, with, with anything employee related and she has a very kind heart and works very hard, and she will be dearly missed and, I think, uh, be appropriate to just give her a round of applause. Thank you, folks. So before you, you have the fiscal 23 budget, uh, balanced fiscal 23 budget, and the revised total of $152,108,824. Uh, 
uh, which comes to uh, a 4.46% increase. We, as you know, continue uh, to make conservative projections on our revenue sources. Uh, we have seen um, the ability for us to get some additional uh, grant funding, so we are fully utilizing uh, the $7 million over two years of our county money, uh, in addition to uh, state money that we're getting and our federal grant money that we have utilized uh, in the last two years. If you see uh, our local meals and hotel and motel taxes are coming back, uh, we are close to pre-pandemic numbers. We still continue to budget uh, those numbers conservatively because uh, we want to make sure that uh, we stay uh, in line with our revenues as they come in. And I must say, you know, it's been, obviously with COVID, it was a challenge in so many ways in the schools. You know, we had two cohorts at one time. We had school closed at one time completely. We had spikes. We had uh, our nurses uh, doing testing, uh, helping us with contact tracing, the school nurses, the health nurses, department of health nurses. And I must say it was, it was a great challenge. And, you know, I think that as Superintendent Lee and the staff put together this budget this year, they did an amazing job to make sure that we maintain staffing levels that would give us very low class sizes. The class sizes are the difference maker, really, in helping kids uh, get back uh, get back on track and really giving them the extra attention they need um, post-COVID. So in addition to that, as you know, uh, we have basically two new schools, one that came on in 2020, East Middle School, and then we have South, which will be coming online in the fall of 23, which is an exceptional accomplishment uh, started by um, Mayor Sullivan and continued by myself, and I think that it's so important for us to have these new buildings. And in addition to that, you know, we have had, our teachers have been so committed to our students and really uh, done an exceptional job at helping them through this pandemic uh, and beyond. If you look at Branch Street Public Schools and all the, um, men, all the young men and women that entered into the National Honor Society and the Spanish and French National Honor Society, the numbers are extraordinary. We, we provide such a great education and continue to do so uh, for our students. And you now I thank the school committee for their hard work in maintaining uh, the budget, in maintaining um, mental health specialists and a number of other um, assistance that our students need. So when you look at the school budget, you will see that the class sizes are probably the lowest we've seen since the 90s, which really will help us um, carry on through the next um, year to two years. We've also been able to uh, fund OPEB, which we had to take a pause on for over three three 377000 and another issue that we were working each year to do was to bring our police and fire uh, overtime funding up to a number that really indicated uh, what the amount needed to be. And if you look at our fire and police overtime numbers, we have increased them both. And we are close, if not at, what our numbers should be. Uh, obviously, this year, you'll see later when we talk about the SUP, that we had some extraordinary situations. And the money is really insignificant compared to the fact that we could have lost the lives of our officers. So um, it was a lot of money, but um, for us it was very important that we were, um, that we were able to... Um, have those officers survive uh, that incident. So as far as the funding goes, 
we are at a point where in normal circumstances we should be close to what our overtime numbers were. The goal is to not come back for supplements on overtime. Um, obviously we know that fuel costs have rised. We know that our snow and ice removal has been up the last couple of years. And we know that we are finishing our contract at the end of this fiscal year. So those three items have been addressed within this budget. Um, and we also have restored our rec department items to pre-pandemic levels. So with that, I stand before you and I ask for your full support as the Committee on Ways and Means has for this fiscal 2023 budget. Um, I think that we have utilized these uh, one and two time funding sources that have been given to our community and many other communities because of the effects of COVID and the economic um, issues related to it. But I have full confidence that the work that my department heads and all of our employees have put in, will continue to put in, will bring new growth that we have been working on. And, you know, our life science is one piece. Motel 6 is being redeveloped. Um, we'll have news on that once we get the actual application. And uh, we just have so many great things happening uh, coming out of this very dark time. And I just want to thank all of you for the time that you spend and you commit to analyzing the budget and making sure that um, we're doing our job. And I ask for your approval on the $152,108,824. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sure. All right, I'd now like to invite um, our town auditors, Sean McGoldrick and Catherine Pomeroy, um, to offer their remarks on the budget. Thank you, Mr. McGoldrick. Thank you, Madam President. And thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. And also, I uh, just want to say a thank you to all the members of Ways and Means. Um, a lot of hard work goes into this budget review, a lot of long nights, and uh, a lot of great questions. So I just think it's important to kind of reiterate something that I wrote in kind of my highlights and analysis, something similar to what I wrote last year as well, too. And the, basically, the, the town is accustomed to increasing their appropriations by, let's say, X percent. And that gap to fund those appropriations at X percent is simply not growing as fast uh, from the revenue side of things. So when the ability to tax is maxed out, reserves are shrinking, and your local receipts budgeting is close to actuals, there's no other wiggle room but to use one-time free, free cash, one-time revenue sources. So without continued one-time revenue sources, as grant funding, sale of town-owned land, etc., the pace simply cannot continue. In order to have the services you want, and without making cuts, we have to find new revenue sources. We've already seen this start to change back in fiscal year 21, 22 and 23, when department heads were asked to cut 4, 10, and 2 percent respectively off their budget after contractual increases. For fiscal year 23, about $3.7 million of non-recurring revenue and $2.1 million of non-recurring funds were used to help balance the budget. That's $5.9 million. Those funding sources ranged anywhere from ARPA funds to one-time local receipts, such, such as the sale of land, circuit breaker supplementals, and also ESSER funding. So unless the town is willing to cut services or think differently about how they provide services, commercial property, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> growing revenue long-term is the only option. Now, whether that means increasing housing, increasing your commercial tax base, raising existing fees, creating new revenue streams, or more than likely a combination of all those things, that is how the town will get through this hump that we're currently in. I know back in the spring, uh, I'm sorry, in the fall, back last September, the former Ways and Means Committee, uh, which some of you are still, still exist, actually I think it says Julia, um, asked for a long-term budget projection for the next 10 years, which I did so. And certainly there were gaps. 
Um, I myself could not take into account one-time funding without knowing what would be available at that point in time. The only thing we knew at that time is that ARPA would exist and we could use to help balance the budget for 22 and 23. As the mayor alluded to, there will be some funding from the county available for use for either 23 or 24, but just like all grants, they go away. So once those go away, there's another time, another one-time funding source that is no longer available. So although I'm trying not to paint a bleak picture, uh, I'm, a, I'm a realist and simply have to go based on what the numbers tell me. So Prop 2.5, in my opinion, will not get you there in terms of what this town wants to do in terms of services and in terms of appropriations. 70% of your budget comes from the tax levy. And if that only grows at a guaranteed 2.5%, the rest of it will simply not get you there. State aid, other local receipts are not outpacing your spending. It's actually going the opposite way. So if there's any questions, I'm certainly more than willing to take them, but thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGoldrick. Um, and that's a, a good segue. So with that, I'll open it up to my colleagues on the council for anybody who would wish to speak on this. Councillor Ryan. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, I just want to say I want to um, congratulate um, Mayor Kokoris for um, presenting this budget in this very difficult uh, fiscal times that we are living in right now. I think um, we all can tell that we're not, it's not the budget we hope we had, but it's the budget that we have. And it's a very well thought out budget that prioritizes what's important for the town of Braintree. And as um, I look out at all the folks here in the audience tonight, um, I think how lucky we are in the town of Braintree that we have so many people that work full-time for the town and work um, volunteer on the different boards for the town. We're very lucky. At my job, I think we have 75 vacant positions right now. We're really struggling to find qualified people. And I look at all the very well-qualified, dedicated employees and volunteers we have in the town of Braintree, and that's what makes the town great. So um, I think this budget, uh, we, we wish we had more revenues. Of course we do. But um, we've really made the priorities um, the right ones in the budget. And I'm going to fully support this budget. And I think as, as a counselor, we need to look at anything that makes sense to increase revenue in the town. And I think we're going to be talking about some of these things coming up in the very near future. And if it makes sense for the town of Braintree, we need to really consider where we can get new revenue streams. So I think people should think about that on a night like tonight when we're approving this budget. But uh, I want to thank Mayor Kokoris and his staff for a, a well thought out budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Flaherty. So I look back at my calendar for the month of May, and I think the Ways and Means Committee logged more than 20 hours of meetings to review this budget. We scoured every column. We asked all kinds of big picture questions, and we also dug really deep into the details. So I want to thank every member of every department who patiently answered question after question with their characteristic precision and thoroughness. Our department heads are second to none. They really, really, really know what they're about. So here's what I can tell you. Braintree is coming to a critical point in our fiscal health because our costs are growing at a rate that is outpacing our revenue. This is a trend that's been going on quietly for a number of years now, and we haven't felt the full brunt of the impact yet because we have the advantage of a few reserves in some of our bigger budget departments, as well as a reasonably healthy free cash supply. And then, in the wake of COVID, we've seen a series of one-time cash infusions from the federal government, and we've burned through that as well. So we're coming to the end of it. This year, we are using $2.2 million of one-time money in our education budget that will not be there next year. I cannot overemphasize how important that $2.2 million is. If we do not raise enough revenue this year to close that gap, that will mean substantial cuts to our school system, which already saw cuts last year, which are not filled in the budget this year. 
$2.2 million means cutting many teachers. It means rising class sizes and diminished resources. Art and music will be vulnerable. A $2.2 million hole in our school budget will mean different things to every child, but it will mean less for all of them. I also want to emphasize that plugging that hole will not be able to be done through further economizing. The one criticism, or at least the loudest one, that has been aimed at this budget is that the school budget has grown less this year than the budget has in our other municipal departments. But what I think needs to be understood is that nearly all of our budget is wrapped up in salary, debt repayment, medical and retirement benefits, and other contractual requirements that we must pay. There's not a reserve or an extra bucket of money lying around that we can use to increase the school budget. We have slightly more money in our free cash this year than last, but still, it only amounts to 2.4% of our total budget, where the goal is 10%. Our insurance costs are up because of our aging infrastructure, and we are funding OPEB this year, but only just barely and far less than we used to. So the biggest concern to me is when we look for $2.2 million to plug the hole in our education budget next year, where will we find it? It is time for Braintree to do a serious assessment of what our priorities are and how we will fund them because either the money has to come from, because the money has to come from somewhere or we have to make cuts. Those cuts that I was describing. And it can't all be tax revenue because we'd be crushed. And it can't all be development either because then we'd be just crushed differently. We have to have an honest conversation about our pri what our priorities are and how to chart a path forward that makes sense for our town because the services that we depend on are in jeopardy. Education is positioned to be hit first, but all of our departments will be hit if we don't do something to correct this direction. We can't just be the land of no, no, I don't want more taxes, no, I don't want to see this development, no, I don't want to make that change. Because when we do that, the people who get left behind is us. So I'm going to support this budget this year, but those cautions in, are real, and I think Braintree would do very well to give serious attention to the master plan process that we are currently going through, because I think if we approach that wisely with an open mind and a creative spirit, we can solve this problem. That's all. Thank you very much, Councillor Flaherty. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Maglio? Thank you, Councillor Borgi. So this was the first budget process for me, as I mentioned frequently. Um, and as someone new to Braintree's process, uh, my goal was to learn as much as possible in order to understand the challenges that we're facing as a community and also to be as effective as I can be as a town councilor. So I have three takeaways that I learned through this process. One of them is that transparency is always worth striving for in order to build connections between residents and our local government. My second takeaway, town workers are highly skilled in stretching less dollars each year, even though needs are growing. That takes innovation and dedication, and I thank you. The third takeaway is to underscore what has been mentioned. And from my perspective, I used to wonder as I watched meetings and I watched on TV, I don't understand why people are talking about a problem with the budget. In the end, it always gets balanced. It always works. What's the problem? So being on the Ways and Means Committee, I learned, um, I learned a lot. And I was able to dig in. And as people have said, our expenses are rising at a rate that is faster than the way our revenue is, is, is coming in. So the way that I look at it is we have 12 months. The clock is already ticking. And we have that period of time to avoid absolutely devastating budget cuts that will impact every one of these talented town employees. 
Um, it'll impact every department, every service, and therefore every resident. And so I concur with every effort to see how we can build and rely on the talented staff that we have to help identify these new opportunities, as well as residents digging in and looking at some of the options that are before us and being open to compromise, negotiation, and flexibility. So I also support this budget completely. Thank you, Councillor, Ma Thank you, Councillor Maglio. Councillor Ringus. Madam President, uh, I will echo, I think, uh, some of the comments that previous councillors have uh, said here tonight. Um, I do want to thank the Mayor's Office for their diligence in putting this together, and obviously the work that our department heads um, did in putting this together. Thank you to members of the school committee that are here. I, I served on the school committee, and I know the um, difficulty in going through the budget process, and oftentimes the frustration when sometimes you feel like there is a sort of predetermined amount that you're working with um, and you're doing everything in your power to, to give back to the children because that's what, that's what our school committee does. Thank you to our members of our Ways and Means, Councillor Maglio, uh, jumped right into the deep end of the pool to start your term and uh, from seeing some of these meetings, you jumped right in and you swam along just well. Uh, to Council Flaherty, who's serving on her, her second term as a member of the uh, Ways and Means, her questions were always thorough, engaged and pointed, and so thank you for your work. To Chairman Reynolds, obviously you bring a breadth of experience from your previous positions to this, so thank you to you as well for leading many hours of meetings over the month of May. Uh, when you watch these meetings or if you watch them on a yearly basis, a lot of times you don't see the full council ask a lot of questions, and that to me is a sign that the Ways and Means did their job because a lot of the questions that many of us would have had have already been answered. So thank you to you folks for your work on that. And thank you to the department heads in the mayor's office for being there to have the answers to provide to them at that point so we can sort of hear from them ahead of time, digest them, and be ready to move forward at our annual town meeting. Um, obviously, uh, I will be supportive of this budget tonight. And I think one thing that no one's noted yet tonight, too, is because we will have emails, I'm sure, or we'll have complaints of why didn't you raise the budget at the annual town meeting. And per our charter, the town council has only one thing that we can do at this meeting, which is either to vote the whole thing down or to cut money away. We have no ability under our charter to add money to it. So I think that's something to always keep in mind. But despite that, I will be supportive of this and would have been either way because I do think this is something that puts our priorities in orders and addresses them in the best way possible given our revenue streams and given the current economic outlook of the town. But I think as we move forward tonight, and I, I imagine from the comments thus far that we will be moving favorably on this budget tonight, I think it's important to celebrate what we, where we got to, that we are moving forward and that we have done so. But I think the next step in our budget process has to start tomorrow. Uh, I think Auditor McGoldrick uh, kind of put it in the best way possible and others have followed up with that. This is not going to have one solution. We do have a difficult budget years ahead of us, and it's not going to be from just new development, it's not just going to be from new taxes, it's not going to be just from creating new revenue streams, it has to come from all three of those things and perhaps other ways. And I think Councilman Maglio and her just comments just now kind of hit it on the head with transparency, and I think with transparency is also communication, because I think we have to engage all of us, the school committee, town department heads, the mayor's office, and, and especially us as councillors, whether we be district or at large, we need to engage with residents. We need to push information out to residents because residents have to have that information available, knowing that there are going to be some very difficult decisions ahead in how we increase these revenues or how we get to where we need to be when these one-time sort of revenue plugs dry up and we are looking at a school budget next year. So I think um, there's a lot of discussion to be had there's a lot of information that needs to be pushed out, and I think we have to look very, very carefully at all of the ways we may be able to increase revenues for our town. So for tonight, thank you to everyone for the work they did. I will be uh, recommending favorable action, but I do think that it's time for all of us now to do some really hard work, roll up our sleeves, and get to work on next year's budget. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ringus. Any other councillors wish to speak? 
Okay. Um, I'd like to add and to echo uh, the sentiments of my colleagues and thank you all for your work and your words on the budget tonight. Um, I think it's clear we all know the budget is complicated and there's so many moving parts. Um, I'm going to focus my remarks tonight, like some of my colleagues, on the biggest part of our budget, almost 50% which I also believe is one of the most urgent. Um, as a parent, a counselor, and a resident, and it, it needs to be addressed with alacrity, and that is the school budget. Uh, so when we were here last year, 10 school positions were eliminated due to budgetary shortfalls. Reading and writing classes were eliminated at the middle schools. We have been unable to fund additional behavioral health specialists, something we know all our kids need right now. And this year, rather than making even more cuts, we are plugging a $2.2 million financial hole with one-time funding that won't be available again, as has already been said. And this includes using more than $1.2 million of our circuit breaker savings. Those are reserves that cover costs for our highest need students. After this year, that cushion will be gone. So we have one year to find at least $2.2 million through both cost savings and through new revenue sources, as has been discussed. Without this money, we were looking at losing between 20 and 30 teachers next year, and yet the $2.2 million is just to keep what we have today. It doesn't restore the previous 10 positions that were lost. It doesn't bring back middle school reading and writing. It doesn't add mental health support. It doesn't provide for cost of living increases for our teachers, and it doesn't refill our circuit breaker savings. $2.2 million is the bare minimum of what we need to simply keep the system going as we know it today. So it's urgent, it's real, but it's not a cause for panic. This should, for all of our residents, be a call to action. What are we going to do about this? First, immediate action needs to be taken so schools can fund the $2.2 million deficit that will keep the system whole for next year. The school committee, under the leadership of Chairwoman Heger, is exploring ways to gain efficiencies that could save approximately $1 million a year. So that's nearly halfway to closing the gap. Please step up, get involved, say yes to solutions that we need to keep our school system strong. Next, we need to start working on our mid- and long-term planning that will bring in new revenue sources and build back our reserves. To echo our town auditor and my colleagues on the council tonight, one way our towns, towns earn money is through new growth and redevelopment. That means welcoming new housing, new businesses, new industries, and new enterprises. These endeavors take thoughtfulness, creativity, vision, and fortitude, which is why the master planning process we are undertaking now is so critical to our future. Great ideas come from all of us. So please make sure you are part of the process. The next public meeting to discuss Braintree's master plan will be held on Thursday, June 23rd at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. And finally, I'd like to say that we need to remember we are all in this together. Hard decisions and compromises are going to have to be made, and that should not and it must not fall on any one department, neighborhood, or age group. We are a community. We have to sink or swim together. Um, so tonight I will be voting in full support of this budget, and in the months that follow, I am calling on all of us to please say yes to new ideas, yes to compromises, and yes to ensuring Braintree's future. So thank you again to the mayor and his staff for putting together the budget this evening. I'll go right ahead, Councillor Mackin. Thank you. Thank you, and I uh, apologize for jumping in last. Um, go right ahead. Is it all right if I ask a question to uh, Superintendent Lee? That, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, sorry, that's quite all right. Fine. Um, yeah. Mr. Lee, and I'm sorry for not asking this in advance. I just kind of thought of it now with all the talk of education. Um, I was under the impression over the last few years enrollment in Branchy schools has declined uh, by at least hundreds of students. I, I don't know exact numbers. Maybe you do, but is that is that correct? Yeah. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Lee. 
Yes, yeah, since COVID, uh, enrollment in the school system overall has declined by over 400 students. Okay, now with COVID being over, is that a trend that you, in your opinion, is going to reverse, or do you see it continuing or kind of level it's out, or do you really not know? truly an unknown. Um, my opinion would be some percentage of that group would return. Uh, how many, I do not know. Uh, the economy plays a large factor in that, as some families have sent their kids off to private schools. Um, if that economy leads them in a different direction, those kids could return. Uh, so it is an unknown, um, and I could offer a personal opinion, but it would probably be less than half in the short term, but over time, probably more. And this was, was did this trend start prior to COVID, or was it strictly COVID that kind of kicked us it's off? It's COVID that dramatically influences the number. If you look at uh, 2020, uh, we lost, going into 2021, about 250 kids, and then the following year we lost close to another 200 kids. So it is truly COVID that was the driver. Um, you know, enrollment in the district prior to that had been increasing in the upper levels, the middle and the high school levels, but declining in the elementary. Uh, but COVID hit all levels almost equally. In the elementary levels, I know uh, the mayor touched on lower class size at the moment. That's where we were seeing the most overcrowding um, previously, correct? Or prior, previously, to, prior, prior to COVID. But yeah, prior, far prior to COVID, um, you know, that. Those numbers were such that the East Project and the South Project were really an answer to those overcrowding okay. issues. All right. Um, no, that's, thank, thank you very much. Those are my only questions. Okay. I, I do think it's kind of clear tonight, based on some of the comments of my colleagues, that education is going to be used in, in the future to push for uh, additional housing in Braintree. So I just think we should keep an eye on those enrollment numbers and make sure that that's correct. Um, that is it for me. I will be voting yes on the budget. budget. I think the mayor did a great job. Thank you, Councillor Mackin. All right, now I'd like to offer um, if there's any members of the general public who would like to speak this evening, this is a public hearing and you're more than welcome to join us. Um, come up to the podium and state your name and address. We'll give people a few minutes to decide. Okay, seeing none. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Councillor Ryan. Thank you. So we have to read this before we close the public yep. hearing, and that is the Town of Braintree FY23 Budget uh, Department Programs 111 Town Council Programs FY23 Original $268,212. Uh, and there is no revisions, no, no change, recommended change. Uh, 121 Mayor's Office Programs, FY23 Original, $481,344. There is no recommended change. Uh, 133 Finance Programs, $14,528,461. There is no recommended change. Uh, 151 Law, $173,430. There is no recommended change. 152 Human Resources Programs, $24,611,670. There is no recommended change. Uh, 161 Town Clerk, $512,337. There is no recommended change. 175 Planning and Community Program, $578,808. There is no recommended change. 210 Police, $12,334,321. There is no recommended change. 220 Fire, $9,785,868. There is no recommended change. 241 Municipal Licenses and Inspections, $1,009,398. There is no recommended change. 300 Education, $73,472,068. There is no recommended change. Blue Hills, 350, $2,831,399. There is no recommended change. Department 400 Public Works, uh, $9,621,431. There is no recommended change. 541 Elderly Affairs, $325,326. There, uh, there is a recommended change. The new amount is $325,912.13. That's a change of $586. Library 610. 
$1,574,164. Uh, there was no recommended change. So the total general fund is $152,108,238 was recommended. The new revised number is $152,108,824.06, and that's a change of $586. For the 400, the golf fund, $1,753,456, no recommended change. 436 soar fund, $11,761,490, no recommended change. 438 water, 10 million two hundred sixty-seven. $548, there was a recommended change, the new amount is $10,447,548, that's a change of $180,000. Stormwater Fund, $1,190,815, there's no recommended change. 690 Cable Access Peg Fund, $595,303, there is no recommended change. Total for all funds is $1. $176,550. Uh, the revised amount is $177,857,436.06 for a net change of $180,586. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that is unanimous. Uh, now we will read, each motion needs to be voted on separately. So is there a motion for order 22025? Yes, number one, that the Town of Braintree raise and appropriate the sum of $152,108,824 to provide for all of the expenses for the maintenance and the operation of the town's several department and programs for the fiscal year 2023, and that the several sums herein are set forth hereby approved for the several purposes that are subject to the source of funding for said expenditures as outlined on the Exhibit A, specifically that the sum of $82,539 be transferred from golf course receipts, the sum of $200,000 be transferred from the overlay surplus account, the sum of $9,700 be transferred from the Waterways Improvement Fund, the sum of $22,000 be transferred from the sale of cemetery lots, the sum of $855,545 be transferred from the water and soil receipts, the sum of $40,828 be transferred from the stormwater receipts, the sum of $2,808,773 be transferred from the American Rescue Plan Act account and the balance to be raised in the tax levy, which shall include $2,660,159 from the debt exclusion, so moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that is unanimous. Number two, that the Town of Braintree appropriate the sum of $1,753,456 to provide for all of the expenses for the maintenance and operation of the town's golf course and related programs for the fiscal year 2023, with that the several sums herein set forth are hereby approved for the several purposes as outlined on the Exhibit A specifically, and that the sum of $1,753,456 be raised in the golf course receipt. So moved. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Read that the Town of Branch appropriate the sum of $22,209,038 to provide for all of the expenses for the maintenance and operation of the town's water and sewer divisions and related programs for fiscal year 2023, and that the sums herein set forth are hereby approved for several purposes as outlined in the attached Exhibit A, specifically that the sum of $103,694 be transferred from the Water and Soil Rehabilitation Fund. The balance of $22,105,344 be raised in the Water and Soil Receipt. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. And number four, the Town of Braintree appropriates the sum of $1,190,815 to provide for all of the expenses for the maintenance and the operation of the Town's Stormwater Division and related programs for fiscal year 2023, and that the several sums herein are set forth are hereby approved for several purposes as outlined on the Exhibit A, attached Exhibit A, specifically that the sum of $1,190,815 be raised in the stormwater receipt. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Five, that the town of Braintree appropriates a sum of $595,303 to provide for all of the expenses for the maintenance and operation of the town's cable, television, public education, and government access and related programs for the fiscal year 2023, that the several sums here and are set forth are hereby approved for the several purposes as outlined on the tax exhibit A, specifically that the sum of $595,303 be raised in the cable franchise fees receipt. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillor Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Six, to see if the Town of Ranch will accept the provisions of Chapter 4453 F and a half of the Massachusetts Terminal Laws establishing a Tri-Town Regional Water Treatment Plan Fund as an enterprise fund effective for fiscal year 2024. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Seven, pursuant to the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44, Section 31D, the Town is authorized to incur a liability in excess of the amount appropriated for snow and ice for fiscal year 2023, so moved. Second. Thank you, Councilor Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. All right. We'll be moving on to our next item of business this evening, also a public hearing. FY 22026 Mayor, FY 2023 Budget, Community Preservation Committee, or take up any action relative thereto. This is a public hearing. Is there a motion to open the public so hearing? Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, opening the public hearing. And I, with that, I will refer to the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the Committee on Ways and Means met over numerous uh, nights during the month of May. Uh, and this item was presented by Director Santucci Rossi during her department review. Uh, the committee voted unanimously for a favorable recommendation for this motion. Thank you very much, Chairman Reynolds. Is there anyone from the mayor's office who would like to speak on this? Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, everybody. Um, as was mentioned, this comes to the full council with unanimous favorable rec recommendation, followed by a presentation from Director Santucci Razi. And what this does is it allocates funds two categories that I think we have all become quite familiar with over the last year or two uh, in order to be used for specific community preservation projects. Uh, and so each motion individually allocates funds to what we refer, often refer to as the buckets of categories for use of the funding. Thank you. Thank you, Chief of Staff Taub. Is there any member of the council who would like to speak on this? Seeing none. Any members of the general public would like to speak? This is a public hearing, and you're welcome to come to the podium. Okay, seeing none, um, I think the total, if I added it up correctly, are over a million dollars this year for our Community Preservation Act. So this is a really great source of funding for some of our important projects in town that might not otherwise get funding. So. Um, this is, I think, another really great benefit of living in Braintree. This is an option for towns, and we have taken advantage of it. Okay, so seeing no one from the public and no counselors, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Thank you, counselors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the public hearing has closed, and we will now move on to the vote. Is there a motion for order 22026? Yes, Madam President. C1, in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5, and the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, that the sum of 200000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Fund to the Community Housing Reserve for Acquisition, Creation, Preservation, or Support of Community Housing or the Rehabilitation or Restoration of Community Housing that is required or created as provided by the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? C2, in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5, and the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee that the sum of 200000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Fund to the open space reserve for the acquisition, creation, or preservation of open space, or the rehabilitation or restoration of open space that is required or created as provided in Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5, so moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
That is unanimous. C3, in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5, and the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee that the sum of 200000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Fund to the Historic Reservation Resource, excuse me, the Historic Resources Reserve for the Acquisition, Preservation, Rehabilitation, and Restoration of Historic Resources as provided in Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. C4, in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5, and the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee that the sum of $478,544 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Fund to the Community Preservation Undesignated as, undesignated as provided by Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. C5, in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5, and the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, the sum of $56,765 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Fund for the fiscal year 2023 Administrative Operating Fund as provided in Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44B, Section 5, said funds to be expended under the direction of the Community Preservation Committee and by the Director of Planning and Community Development. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Okay, moving on to 22027 Mayor, FY 2023 budget, continuation of revolving funds or take up any action relative thereto. This is our third public hearing. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, with that, I would like to ask Chairman Reynolds for the recommendation of the Committee of Ways and Means. Thank you, Madam President. The Committee on Ways and Means uh, met on this uh, during the process of the operating budget overview this past month, and the Committee on Ways and Means voted unanimously in favor of this recommendation. Thank you very much, Councillor Reynolds. Is there anyone from the Mayor's office who'd like to speak on the revolving funds? Thank you, Madam President. <laughs> Just by way of reminder, the uh, funds are unique to individual departments and the spending is overseen by the corresponding department head with the um, FY23 proposed spending limit indicated in the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Chief of Staff Taub. Are there any members of the council who would wish to speak on this? Sure. Okay, seeing none, any members of the general public who would like to speak on the revolving funds? All right, seeing none. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that closes the public hearing. Uh, we will now move on to the vote. Is there a motion for Order 22027? Yes, Madam President. R1, that in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half of the General Laws, the Town of Braintree hereby sets the maximum amount that may be spent during fiscal year 2023 beginning July 1st, 2022, for the revolving funds established by ordinance for certain departments, boards, committees, agencies, or offices as follows. Revolving fund elder Sir affairs, services, and activities. Um, this is the department board or committee or agency or officer, Department of Elderly Affairs, and the FY23 spending limit is 30000 Immunization, Board of Health, spending limit 50000 Library materials and library trustees, spending limit, limit 45000 Library room rentals, library trustees, 5,000. Recycling materials, mayor in conjunction with recycling coordinator, $4,800. Household hazardous waste, mayor in conjunction with recycling coordinator, $50,000. Full day kindergarten school committee, $1,050,000. Pro shop, mayor in accordance with director of golf operations, $200,000. Food and beverage, mayor in conjunction with director of golf operations, $450,000. Water meter, mayor in conjunction with director of water operations, $50,000. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to all the department heads for joining us this evening. Um, you're welcome to stay. That closes the budget motions, the official budget motions this evening. And we will be moving on to National Grid Petitions 22022 for Sherbrooke Ave and Robinson Ave or take up any action relative thereto. 
I'm going to turn it over to Councillor Ryan, Chairman of the Committee on the Department of Public Works. Thank you, Madam President. Earlier this evening, the Committee on the Department of Public Works met and recommended uh, unanimously favorable action for, uh, for all of the petitions that we will be voting on tonight. So the first one, 2202 National Grid Petition, Sher Sherbrooke Ave and Robinson Ave. Um, the motion is to relay approximately 560 feet of one inch bare steel from 1960 with approximately 360 560 feet of 2-inch plastic in Sherbrooke Ave from Washington Street to number 50 Sherbrooke Ave and approximately 395 feet of 1.5-inch bare steel from 1941, approximately 450 feet of 2-inch plastic from 1975 with approximately 845 feet of 2-inch plastic in Robinson Avenue from Washington Street to number 68 Robinson Ave with staff recommendations. Bells had no conflicts uh, with this permit. The DPW has reviewed the subject petition and the accompanying sketch for the gas main replacement on Sherbrooke Avenue and Robinson Avenue. The work is being proposed to eliminate aging gas infrastructure. These sections of Sherbrooke Avenue and Robinson Avenue are not subject to the excavation moratorium. Sherbrooke Avenue was last reserviced by total reconstruction in 2012 and is in excellent condition. Robinson Ave was last resurfaced with the microsurfacing in 2008 and is in fair condition. The DPW recommends the following conditions for this petition if it is to be granted. A temporary patch will be placed immediately after the work. The street excavation should be saw cut, backfilled, and compacted in 8 inch lifts, paved to match existing asphalt depth with a minimum depth of 4 inches, and 2 inch lifts to match the existing street grade. After maintaining the temporary patch, Throughout one winter, a permanent patch shall be placed in the following spring. The permanent repair on Sherbrooke Avenue shall be curb to crown, mill and overlay with a pavement depth of one and a half inches. The permanent repair on Robinson Ave shall be a one and a half inch grind and inlay patch encompassing the width of the original trench plus one foot on each side. If the permanent patch fit falls within two feet of the roadway edge, that patch shall be extended completely to the gutter. Uh, the DPW also recommends the following requirements be added to the permit. Uh, they must, National Grid should have a pre-construction meeting with DPW and they're not allowed to close the street. That's up to the Town of Brantree, the standard language. So that's um, the motion. So moved. Thank you, councillors. Um, I just wanted to offer if there were any councillors or if anyone from the Mayor's office had any comments on the National Grid before we take the vote. Okay. All right, with that, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Moving on to 22023 National Grid Petition Elm Street to Railroad Street or take up any action relative thereto. So the motion is to relay approximately 300 feet of 6-inch bare steel from 1911 with approximately 300 feet of 4-inch plastic in Elm Street from Washington Street to Railroad, Railroad Street and approximately 180 feet of 6-inch bare steel from 1911 with 180 feet of 4-inch plastic in Railroad Street from Elm Street to the end of the main with staff recommendations. This is from Beld. Please note Beld has a 115,000 oil volt oil-filled transmission line located on River Washington Stores Ave. Beld Engineering should be notified in advance of any excavation to be performed in close proximity to this line. Beld will provide on-site support and safety personnel at no cost to the project. Beld also has a 13.8 volt underground system on Elm Street, and this is in concrete and cut in case duck bank to be identified through the dig safe process. DPW's comments are, the DPW has reviewed the subject petition and the accompanying sketch for the gas main replacement on Elm Street and Railroad Street, and the work is being proposed to eliminate aging gas infrastructure. Prior to the DPW's resurfacing of Railroad Street, which is currently planned for this year, Elm Street is also not subject to the excavation moratorium having been last resurfaced in the year 2000. Given the late nature of National Grid's request, the DPW recommends the following conditions for this permit if it is to be granted. National Grid shall begin work as soon as possible following council approval so that the DPW's 2022 resurfacing project on Railroad Street is not delayed. National Grid shall guarantee that all excavated trenches within the town's right-of-way are backfilled to attain a minimum of 95% compaction to ensure that the excavated areas will not settle once the roadway and sidewalks are resurfaced. 
should the newly paved roadway and or sidewalk settle because of poorly compacted trenches, National Grid will be required to perform large-scale curb-to-curb repairs to fully mitigate any deficiencies. A temporary patch will be placed immediately after the work. The street excavations should be saw cut, backfilled, and compacted in 8-inch lifts, paved to match existing asphalt depth with a minimum depth of 4 inches, and 2-inch lifts to match the existing street grade. After maintaining the temporary patch on Elm Street through one winter, a permanent patch shall be placed the following spring. The permanent patch shall be 1.5 inch grind and inlay patch encompassing the width of the original trench plus one foot on each side. If the permanent patch falls within two feet of the roadway, the patch shall be extended completely to the gutter. Uh, they also recommend they should have a pre-construction meeting with Braintree DPW in the standard. They can't close the, ro close the roadway, only uh, the town of Braintree, so so moved. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Moving on to 22024 National Grid Petition Cherry Street or take up any action relative thereto. So the most, motion is to relay, relay approximately 100 feet of one and a half inch bare steel from 1937, approximately 200 feet of two inch coated steel from 1957 with approximately 300 feet of two inch plastic in Cherry Street from Common Street to the end of the main at number 35 Cherry Street with staff recommendations. Bell, there's no conflict from Bell. The DPW, the DPW has reviewed the subject petition and the accompanying sketch for the gas main replacement on Cherry Street. The work is being proposed to eliminate aging gas infrastructure. Cherry Street is not subject to ex excavation moratorium, having been last resurfaced by overlay in 2011. However, however, the roadway is in excellent condition. Given the pavement condition and the narrow width of the existing roadway, the DPW recommends the following conditions for this petition if it is to be granted. A temporary patch shall be placed immediately after the work. The street excavation should be saw cut, backfilled, and compacted in eight inch lifts, paved to match existing asphalt, asphalt depth with a minimum depth of four inches, and two inch lifts to match the existing street grade. After maintaining the temporary patch through one winter, a permanent patch shall be placed in the following spring. The permanent patch shall be curb to crown, mill and overlay, with a payment depth of 15 inches. Uh, the DPW also recommends if the permit is to be granted, that they should have a pre-construction meeting in the same standard that they are not allowed to close their own roadway. Only Braintree is allowed to do that. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. I'm getting a little jealous that you keep thanking Councillor Ryan and Hume. I'm doing all the reading, and she's just saying, <laughs> she's just saying second over there. Yeah. <laughs> Extra special thank you to Councillor Ryan. I'm, 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 I'm being a little fresh. Um, All right, 22028 National Grid Petition West Street or take up any action relative there too. Take motion to relay approximately 2,300 feet of three inch coated steel from 1951-1954 and the 20 feet of three inch plastic from 1987 with approximately 2,320 feet of six inch plastic in West Street from Herbert. Relay approximately 15 feet of two inch plastic from 1987 and approximately 310 feet of two inch coated steel from 1951 with approximately 325 feet of two inch plastic in Oak Street from West Street to the end of the main relay minor amounts of old gas pipe in Mount Vernon Street 25 feet, Tremont Street 35 feet, and Hollingsworth Ave 70 feet to make connections to the new pipe on West Street. Relay approximately 255 feet of two inch coated steel with approximately 255 feet of two inch plastic in private way at number 162 West Street to the end of the main with the staff recommendations. Belt has no conflicts. The DPW has reviewed the subject petition and the accompanying sketch for the gas main replacement on West Street and Oak Street. The work is being proposed to eliminate aging gas infrastructure. West Street and Oak Street are not subject to the excavation moratorium having been resurfaced by Mill and Overlay in 2009 by microsurfacing in 2014 respectively. West Street is a collector road that carries a high volume of traffic and the pavement is in great condition. As such, the DPW recommends that the subject petition, petition be granted with the following conditions. A temporary patch shall be placed at all locations immediately after the work. The street excavation should be saw cut, backfilled, and compacted in the 8-inch lifts paved to match existing asphalt depth with a minimum depth of 4 inches in the 2-inch lifts to match the existing street grade. After maintaining the temporary patches through one winter, permanent, restora permanent restoration shall be completed the following spring. The permanent restoration on West Street shall be curb to crown mill and overlay with a pavement depth of 1.5 inches. The permanent restoration on Oak Street shall be an 8-foot wide grind and inlay patch 
with the pavement depth of one and a half inches. If the edge of the permanent pavement on Oak Street falls within two feet of the roadway gutter, the patch shall be extended completely to the roadway edge. National Grid or its pavement contract shall meet with the engineering division prior to the permanent restoration to agree on the work limits with regards to the other side of the street connections that are made. These conditions apply to all work within the public right of ways. National Grid must ensure that they, any necessary permissions required for excavation within the private way are sought prior to construction. They also recommend the following requirements be added to the permit is to be granted, and this is talking about the pre-construction meeting and they're not allowed to close the roadways, only branch you can do that, so moved. Second. Thank you, Councilors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Madam President, I just want to take a moment you know, after doing these four permits tonight uh, to really point out what an excellent job the DPW staff are doing on these permits. You know, looking out for the town of Braintree, working with National Grid to make sure that our infrastructure is being maintained and that uh, our roadways, if they're in good condition, they're being put back in proper condition after these projects. So I want to commend the DPW. We've never seen better results now for uh, these permits. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilor Ryan. All right. Uh, we are moving on now to 22029, Mayor, request for appropriation, CPA appropriation, Windjammer Cove, affordable, house, affordable conversion project, supplemental funds request, or take up any action relative thereto. This public hearing will be opened and then continued. So is there a motion to open the public hearing for order 22029? So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. And now is there a motion to continue the public hearing for Order 22029 to June 7, 2022 at 7.30 p.m.? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. The, um, Next item on tonight's agenda, 22030 Mayor, FY22, Supplemental Appropriation Number 1, or take up any action relative thereto. This is also a public hearing. So is there a motion to open the public hearing for 22030? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that is unanimous. The public hearing is now open, and I will refer to Chairman Reynolds, Chairman of the Committee of Ways and Means, for the recommendation. Thank you, Madam President. The Committee on Ways and Means met early this evening and voted unanimously for a favorable recommendation to the full council for Order 22030. Thank you very much, Chairman Reynolds. Would anyone from the mayor's office like to speak? Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to... Um, First, ask for your support on this. And if you look at the 14 motions, you will see the amount of effort. And I just want to commend my staff. Um, Chief of Staff Nicole Taub, uh, Ed Spellman, and all my department heads. I mean, this has been uh, really how we've operated. Not only do we conservatively budget, but we also look at all of our spending throughout the year and try to find ways of reallocating funds if we can to cover those costs. And I remember for many years, you know, supplements would be 2.4 million, 2.4 million, 2.6 million. Uh, we have done everything we can to utilize the least amount of free cash. And I might note that if it wasn't for um, the major, major tragic incident and having our offices shot and a murder at the South Shore Plaza and a couple of other issues, we we may not be looking at, we would not have been looking at any supplement at all coming from free cash. And the goal has been, as we funded our budget this year, to not have to come back and supplement. So I think that, you know, it's really a tribute to every one of my department heads, my chief of staff, and um, Ed Spellman for working together and combing through this budget. And uh, I just want to thank them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief of Staff House. Thank you. Um, so as was noted, the total supplement request is valued at $2,585,267.83, broken down in a variety of categories. 
uh, predominantly involving police and fire overtime as well as snow and ice deficits and deficits related to the unanticipated rise in fuel costs. Uh, this is truly a town-wide collaborative effort. Uh, as you may recall, in the past we started uh, undertaking a process where before we utilized free cash to support supplemental funding requests, we reviewed every department's year-to-date expenditure as well as previously authorized but unspent capital expenditures down to the penny. You'll see there's one account that had one dollar in it that's being transferred to support a supplement, which is one dollar less we have to utilize free cash in order to close out uh, fiscal year 22. And while I'm here, I want to just take a minute. I know some folks have left, but we had other uh, town employees with us tonight. We still have Ben Hulk, Assistant Director of DPW with us, Chris Griffin, um, Acting Director of Recreation, Mary Kenny, who handles the finances at the Police Department, also previously with us. We had Chris Trudell from Engineering, Lou Dutton, the Water Works Superintendent, Darren Brown, Director of Golf Operations. We also were joined by Tom Devin of the School Committee, who I don't believe was recognized at the beginning of our meeting, uh, and just want to echo the sentiments uh, previously raised, but as they specifically uh, relate to the supplemental and how hard everybody worked combing through their budgets and really identifying funds that were needed to get to year end and funds that could be transferred to help support other departments uh, as part of this fiscal year. Thank you. Thank you, Chief of Staff Taub. Are there any counselors who would like to speak on this matter? Any members of the public would like to speak on this? Okay, I uh, would like to commend the mayor's office and his staff, um, and Councillor Ryan is going to be <laughs> really tired after reading all of these. And I think it speaks volumes for the amount of work that our town employees are doing to take as good care of our, our finances as possible. Um, I would like to point out that just like in our own lives, um, there are unanticipated expenses that arise year after year. And so that is another reason why it is so important for us as a community to start thinking about how we're going to build back our reserves um, to pay for things that are understandably unanticipated. Um, police incidents, snow and ice removal, a terrible winter, gas prices rising. Um, so again, we need to make sure we have our money in the reserves to pay for these services that are absolutely critical, not extra. Um, so again, I would urge all residents um, in collaboration with the council and with our town offices to think through what we can do to help build back up our reserves in our community. Okay, with that, don't see anyone else wishing to speak. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Any opposed? Okay, that is closes the public hearing. Um, and now is there a motion for order 22030, and each of these will be voted on separately. Yes, Madam President. Number one, Police Department motion that the sum of $51,433 be transferred from the Finance Principal on Debt Program 50 principal on debt account, $41,741.55 be transferred from the finance interest on debt program, 52 interest on debt account, $12,808.41 be transferred from the finance interest on debt program, 52 BN interest on debt account, $280,775 be transferred from the human resources admin program, 01 workers' compensation account, 215000 be transferred from the human resources admin program, 01 workers' Compensation account, 1,000 be transferred from the Human Resources Admin Program, 01 Labor Relations account, 2,500 be transferred from the Human Resources Admin Program, 01 Consultant account, $54,848 be transferred from the Municipal License and Inspection Department Health Program, 07 Public Nurse account, 1,000 be transferred from the Town Council Administration Program, 01 Dues and Membership account, 8,000 be transferred from the Finance account, Program 04, photocopy of rental account, 1,500 be transferred from finance account, accounting program 04, photocopy of supplies account, 10,000 be transferred from the finance general insurance program 09, insurance deductible account, 5,000 be transferred from the finance treasury program 10, postage account 5,000 be transferred from the finance treasury program 10, printing account 
$12,046 be transferred from Finance Treasury Program 10 meeting account. $29,843.58 be transferred from the Planning and Development Administration Program 01 Assistant Director Account 8,000 be transferred from the Planning and Development Administration Program 01 Administration Expense Account $50 be transferred from the Planning and Development and Fair Housing Program 8 account, Awards Account 100 be transferred from the Planning Development and Development Fair Housing Program 08 Printing Forms Account 800 be transferred from the Planning and Development Fair Housing Program 08 Committee Expense Account $50 be transferred from the Planning and Development and Historic Commission Program 09 Post Account 600 be transferred from the Planning and Development Historic Commission Program 09 Dues and Membership Account 100,000 be transferred from the Sale of Town Land Account and 293,500 be transferred from the Fiscal Year 2021 Certified Free Cash for a total of $1,124,098 be transferred to the Police Department Overtime Accounts and further the Director of the Municipal Finance be authorized to allocate some said sums to and among various line items effectively affected hereby so moved. Second. Thank you, Councillor Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Number two. Two, Police Department motion the sum of $49,629 be transferred from the fiscal year 2021 certified free cash to the Police Department Bureau, Patrol Bureau Program 04 sworn personnel council moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Three, motion the sum of $82,491 be transferred from the fiscal year 2021 certified free cash to the following accounts, 28757 to the Police Department Equipment Maintenance Program, 03 outside MV repairs, $4,599 be to the Police Department Equipment Maintenance Program, 03 ties and tubes account, 45600 29 to the Police Department Equipment Maintenance Program 03 Gasoline Account and $3,506 for the Police Department Building Maintenance Program 02 Equipment Maintenance Account. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. For a fight upon motion, the sum of $166,914 be transferred from the Finance Department Administration Program 019C Reserve Account. $126,418.08 be transferred from the Library Department Current Topics Program 05 Librarians Account. $10,000 be transferred from the Human Resources Department Administrative Program 01 Unemployment Account. $50,000 be transferred from the Human Resources Department Head Administration Program 01 Retirement Sick Leave Account. $75,000 be transferred from the Human Resources Department Veterans Benefits Program 06 Veterans Benefits Account. $200,000 be transferred from the Human Resources Department Administration Program 01 Meetings Account. $1,670 be transferred from the Planning Development Administration Program 01 Assistant Director Account. $5,500 be transferred from the Planning Development Administration Program 01 Administration Account. $3,000 be transferred from the Town Clerk Administration Program 01 Technology Account Administration Account. $20,797.25 be transferred from the Town Clerk Elections Programs 02 Part-Time Employees Account. $6,980.40 be transferred from the Police Capital Program 02 FY19 Evidence Containment Area Account. 10,000 be transferred from the Elder Affairs Capital Program 02541196 FY19 COA Roof Repairs Account. 12,000 be transferred from the Elder Affairs Capital Program 02541196 FY19 COA Boiler Repairs Account. $90.39 be transferred from the DPW Capital Program 00400 Inspection Drainage account one dollar be transferred from the police department capital programs two two one zero one nine zero six fy19 police tasers account one dollar and ninety five cents be transferred from police capital program two two one zero one nine zero six fy19 police portable radio account and two hundred and thirty nine thousand six hundred one dollars and ninety three cents be transferred from the fiscal year two thousand twenty four one certified free cash for a total of $728,175 be transferred to the Fire Department Overtime Account and further that the Director of Municipal Finance and be authorized to allocate said sums to and among various line items affected thereby so moved. Second. Thank you, Councillors Ryan and Hume. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Department of Public Works, number five. Motion the sum of 25000 be transferred from the DPW Recreation and Community Events Program 15 Department Head Account and $26,810 from the DPW Recycling Program 21 Recycling Process Account for a total of $51,810 be transferred to the DPW Equipment Maintenance Program 03 Outside Motor Vehicle Repairs Account. So moved. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? That's unanimous. Six Public Works Department motion the sum of seven thousand be transferred from fiscal year two thousand twenty one certified free cash to the DPW equipment maintenance program zero three diesel council moves. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Seven Public Works Department motion the sum of seventy three thousand one hundred and ninety dollars from the DPW Recycling Program twenty one recycling processing account six hundred six thousand eight hundred and ten dollars be transferred from fiscal year two thousand twenty one certified free cash for a total of eighty thousand to the DPW equipment maintenance program O three gas account. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Eight Public Works Department motion the sum of nine thousand four hundred and twenty six dollars and sixty nine cents be transferred from the Fiscal year 2021 certified free cash to the DPW Braintree Weymouth Recreational District Program 21 Braintree Weymouth Recreational Assistant Account Assessment Account. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Nine. Public Works Department motion the sum of $305,419.14 be transferred from the fiscal year 2021 certified free cash to the DPW Snow and Ice Program 11 Contract Services Account. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous. Um, Ten, Police Department motion the sum of $23,189 be transferred from the Police Administration Program 01 per Sworn Personnel Account. $12,754 be transferred from the Police Administration Program 01 Education Account. $4,143 be transferred from the Police Administration Program 01 Holiday Account. $66 be transferred from the Police Administration Program 01 accredita Accreditation Account. 2000 be transferred from Police Administration Program 01 Investigation Funds Account for a total of $42,152 to be transferred to the Police Patrol Bureau Program 04 Sworn Personnel Account. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. 11 Police Department motion the sum of $57,395 be transferred from the Police Special Services Program 08 Sworn Personnel Account. 16610 be transferred from the Police Department's Special Services Program 08 Education Account. 12838 be transferred from the Police Department Special Services Program 08 Overtime Account. $2,473 be transferred from the Police Special Service Program 08 Shift Differential Account for a total of 89316 to be transferred to the Police Department Police Patrol Bureau Program 04 Sworn Personnel Account. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Twelve. Police Department, the sum of $5,210 be transferred from the Police Detective Bureau Program 06 Sworn Personnel Account to be transferred to the Police Patrol Bureau Program 04 Sworn Personnel Account. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. 13 Police Department motion the sum of $2,079 be transferred from Police Detective Bureau Program 06 Education Account. $2,126 be transferred from Police Detective Bureau Program 06 SL Stipend Account for a total of $4,205 to be transferred to Police Patrol Bureau Program 04 Overtime Account. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. 14 Police Department the motion the sum of $5,262 be transferred from Police Animal Control Program 10 Overtime Account $1,074 be transferred from Police Animal Control Program 10 Animal Disposal Account for a total of $6,336 be transferred to the Police Communication Program 05 Overtime Account. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you for your diligence um, on this very much. All right. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. You're welcome. Moving on to new business. We have no new business this evening. So with that, I'd like to move on to the referrals. Um, Councillor Ryan. So a uh, motion to refer to the Committee of Ways and Means um, 22032, mere acceptance of donations or take up any action related there to. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yeah. Okay. And to refer to the Committee on the Department of Public Works 22033 National Grid Petition Stonewood Lane or take up any action related there too. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. That is unanimous. All right. Thank you all so much for being here this evening. That ends our annual town meeting. I want to make sure I thank our BCAM team. Wes Ray, Bill Needham, Jerry Comack, and your entire crew for making these meetings available to our residents, um, either through cable or streaming online. 
Our next meeting will be next Tuesday, Jan uh, January, June 7th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.